The prizes at Tramullis, excavations at Tramullis University College, Belfast, Rithlogue. The excavation in the campus of Stramalus University College was undertaken as the undergraduate training excavation for Queen's University archaeology students. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this module had to be cancelled in 2020. So from June to August 2021, two year groups, groups of students were accommodated, each in a three week, week block, which we termed phase one and phase two. As the pandemic was and is ongoing, the location of the excavation close to Queen's University and to Belfast City Centre meant that students could make their own way to site, as transporting them in a minibus, as is normally done for a training excavation, would not have been possible. <clears throat> it was also planned that during the excavation, the majority of the students would have their own trench, measuring one metre by one metre, so that social distancing could be maintained between the students when on site. The remainder of the students worked in pairs in, in two metre by two metre trenches. Where possible, each student used a set of tools that was allocated to them for the duration of the excavation. Three areas of interest that were highlighted within the Sramalus campus, and these locations were excavated. Area one was to the rear of Sramalus house. Area two was near the farm buildings that lie to the west of the house and area three was located to the west of the campus in an area planted with trees. Area one. This photograph shows a landscaped earthen bank sweeping along the roadway up to the entrance of Stramalis House. In 1969, a service trench was being excavated near this earthen bank next to the lawn adjacent to Stramalis House. The work was observed by WACB then director of the Ulster Museum, who recovered shares of Sudrian ware. An excavation was then undertaken by Peter Woodman, who also worked at the museum. This work uncovered features which were interpreted to be the truncated remains of a rath ditch, and further shares of Sudrian ware pottery were found. Woodman prepared a preliminary report, and it was intended that he would return to conduct further investigations but this did not happen. Unfortunately, we are not certain where exactly this excavation took place, so we do not know where the features were found or in what direction they ran. Our investigation to the rear of Stramalus House was on land that had had a building removed a few years previously. So we had a large area of the footprint of this demolished building in which to locate our trenches. It was hoped that more evidence similar to that found in 1969 would be recovered. Therefore, seven trenches, each two metre square, were opened in this area. The four trenches in this photograph were aligned east-west behind the extension to Stramalus House, and another three trenches were aligned north-south to the rear of the main house. Some of the trenches were excavated to a maximum depth of two, of two metres, at which point excavation was stopped. What was uncovered in all seven trenches were two main deposits of material. The upper deposit was modern material that had been imported to site to level the site after the removal of the building. The material below appeared to have been brought in to landscape the area after the building of Stramalus House, and in the process, created a basement level for the building. This material therefore dates to the early 19th century. We did not find any evidence of the early medieval activity that it had been found during the small scale excavations in 1969. This is a section drawing being done by two of our students in one of the shallower trenches in this area. Modern material imported to the site and used as a levelling deposit can clearly be seen. Area two. At the beginning of the 17th century, the land on which the college now stands was acquired by Arthur Chichester. From him, Moses Hill took a 61 year lease in 1606 and erected a fortified house and bond on the site, thought to have been located in the general area where the college's farm buildings stand today. 
The farm buildings form two courtyarded areas and today are used by the gardening staff and estates department. Located to the west and northwest of these farm buildings are a number of small areas under grass. One metre square trenches were therefore opened in these areas of grass in an attempt to find any evidence of the 17th century house. In this photo can be seen resodded trenches from the phase one of the training excavation and open trenches from phase two. It can be awkward excavating in such a confined space, especially the deeper it gets. The excavation revealed metalled and roughly cobbled surfaces, which were probably garden paths. Also found was a lot of evidence for metalworking. This included ashy layers, slag and iron objects, suggesting that smithian had taken place in the area. There was also a lot of brick recovered from this area, including this surface made of brick and a brick drain. The only evidence of 17th century activity found in Area 2 were a few pieces of pottery. Perhaps the trenches were not excavated to a sufficient depth to recover any 17th century remains. Area 3. Area 3 was at the western boundary of the campus in an area that had been planted with trees. It was adjacent to the Dalesworth housing estate. On the first edition Ordnance Survey map of 1832 to 1846, a long narrow building with an enclosed plot of, plot of land at its northern end is depicted in this area. This building was located close to the laneway, which was the primary access route into the estate at that time. This laneway leads onto the Stranmullis Road. This building is not shown on later maps and no trace of it can currently be seen on the ground. Trenches were opened in the area in the hope of finding some evidence of the building, which was suspected to be agricultural in nature, perhaps a greenhouse. As the Stranmullis campus is a conservation area, there is a tree preservation order on all of its trees. Because of this, we were not allowed to cut any roots that were greater than 20 millimetres in diameter. So the students had to work around some of the roots, which could be awkward whenever they ran across the trenches. Also, we regularly had unannounced visitors to this area who liked to use the spoiled heaps as litter trays. No evidence of the building depicted on the map was uncovered though something a lot more significant and surprising did reveal itself. The trench to the bottom of this photo was the first to be opened in Area 3, and it was where the prehistoric cut feature was first identified. The feature was a curvilinear cut, the sides of which were evident in four of our trenches. Some of the trenches were excavated to a depth of one metre before hitting subsoil at the base of the cut. Although the small size of our trenches meant it was not possible to be certain about the size, depth or nature of the prehistoric feature. Neolithic flint and coarse pottery shares were recovered from the fills and the surrounding soil. This is one of our students with a scraper that she found in her trench. The discovery of this site is very important as it adds a pre previously unknown prehistoric site to the archaeological map and adds a new dimension to the history of the area. And in conclusion, a reflection on our wonderfully unpredictable Irish weather. At times, marquees were used to provide a bit of shade during a very hot and sunny spell. And at times, the marquees could not cope with the weight of rain that fell.